Hello, people. I'm Ginny Motherall, and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today, we're going to look at something rather exciting. We're going to look at how to celebrate the spring, the season of spring, using nine different methods within your craft. Also, I've got an incredibly exciting giveaway for you, so stick around for that because you'll want it, I promise. But primarily, this is a video on celebrating spring with witchcraft. So this is part of a new series of mine, which is a four part series looking at each season of the year and how to celebrate it. I know I've got my almanac series, which I'm sure you're all very aware of because it's very popular, but this is looking at the overview of a sort of three month cycle that the world does have. And this of course is going to start with spring. So spring has really got a new broom feel about it, hasn't it? It's one of those things where, you know, we can see the growth, the growth in the earth, the growth on the trees, the flowers are starting to sprout, the birds are calling, the frogs are mating, and maybe that should inspire us to have a go ourselves. A little bit of procreation never hurt at springtime, and it's something I do recommend. I mean, I recommend a little bit of procreation, not necessarily to actually have a baby. I mean, I definitely don't want another baby, but... As a friend of mine once said to me, rather than breeding yourself, why don't you just breed your animals? And so that's what I do. So I'm very excited that my little terrier has come into season recently because I will definitely be breeding from her. Just so I can have puppies. It's all good. It's all good. However, with all this new growth energy, my first way to celebrate the new year is to learn a new skill in the craft. Now, I'm going to suggest as a startup one, tarot cards. Tarot cards are incredibly easy to learn. In fact, if you wanted a one-to-one -one session with me, I can teach you in about half an hour how to read every single tarot card and get it right. You'll do well and then with a little bit of practice you'll become more confident and you'll be able to go off and read them for everybody else. Everybody has this ability, they just need to develop it. So if tarot cards don't rock your boat, why not try playing cards or some other such skill along those lines? Because all of them will be adding to that wealth of experience. The second great new skill that I think you should have a go at is the basics of herbalism. Now, this is slightly more difficult, but just to help you along the way, what I would suggest you do is to grow your own herbs. You can grow them on a windowsill, you can grow them in your garden, you can grow them in a pot in the kitchen. It doesn't make much of an odds. Just grow some. You know those herbs that you buy, the living herbs in the supermarkets? You can buy those, bring them home and grow them on. It is from these simple herbs, such as parsley and coriander, that you will be able to learn the basics of herbalism. Herbalism isn't just about knowing what benefits each individual herbs have. It's about keeping them alive, growing them on and storing them. So turning them into elixirs, balms, drying them, storing them, etc. And this is one of the ways I would suggest that you first start out in herbalism. Learn how to grow and process your herbs for use. You can look up in any book the attractions of each herb and what they're good for, but there's no good if the herbs you've got have gone mouldy or you can't grow them. So learn the basics of herbalism. And number three on this list is why not study your crystal ball methodology. Crystal balls, I appreciate her, are exceptionally expensive. However, I have a beautiful crystal ball to give away, sponsored by Original Botanica. Original Botanica offers the ultimate one-stop shop for all your spiritual needs. From spiritual and religious candles to magical oils and incense or sacred spiritual kits, the online Botanica and retail store is ready to help you on your spiritual journey. We will post this prize worth over $70 to the lucky winner. Although you don't need a crystal ball to scry, it does help. So if you would like to win this crystal ball, then all you have to do is leave the name of the shop that is sponsoring the prize in the comments below. I mean, it couldn't be simpler. You can learn to use crystal ball scrying. Crystal balls are also great for converting energies. There is more to a crystal ball than just divining the future. This competition will close on the 29th of February. So you've got simply to write the sponsor's name of this prize and leave it in the comments below. 
we will draw your names from a hat. I will not draw your names from a hat, actually, it's a complete lie. I'm going to use my pendulum and I will douse for them and that person will receive the crystal ball. We will post it out to you. So, good luck. As I have said, spring has this incredibly new broom energy feel about it. And what does new broom energy think? <gasps> spring cleaning. We don't just clean ourselves physically, we clean ourselves psychically. And so it's quite a good idea to clean and cleanse your home. Give it a good old spring cleanse. Go through your house and clean it physically. And once that's done and the dust has settled, then go through your home and cleanse it psychically. I would use smoke cleansing. Open all the windows, get your smudge stick, get your bell, clap into the corners maybe, or whistle through, play very loud rock music. That's always good. It's the vibrations that force out the negative energies. And go through every single part of your house, making sure that the energy in it is clean and fresh and bright. Number five is to clear up your witchy supplies. I have a bureau here where I keep a lot of things. It's got a lot of drawers and this tends to get a bit cluttered. So I'm going to quickly go through it and give it a spring clean and make a list of all the things that I'm going to need to buy, which I have used over the previous year and forgotten to replace. This is also a really good opportunity to get rid of any old spell bottles or bits of disgustingness that are lying around because, you know, they can sort of tend to be forgotten in corners, let's say. So restocking your witchcraft supplies and throwing away all the bad stuff is a really good idea. Number six is to recharge your crystals. Now, I tend to use my crystals throughout the year. They're, they're sort of scattered over my house, aren't they? I think, oh gosh, this area of my house is not particularly nice. And I'll put a crystal in it in order to help its energy move into the area that I want it to be. And so <laughs> at the end, I find I've got no crystals. I don't know where they are. They're left under the beds and in corners. And it's a great idea just to go and get them and cleanse the lot of them in one fell swoop. This will make sure that your crystals have been wiped clean of their negative energy and are ready for the use of your spellcraft. If you use your crystals a lot, you should do this more often. But I tend to use my crystals and then forget about them, that I've used them and they're therefore left somewhere. And so once a year, but this kind of cleansing is fine. In the month of February, we are in the Northern Hemisphere are going to get two extra hours of daylight, which is so exciting for me because I'm not great with the cold and the dark. And so this is my time that I start thinking about coming out of my burrow, my witchy burrow, and moving back into nature. One of the great ways to do this is to take nature walks. Every week, go out, walk through nature and take a note of everything that is happening. As plants and trees and flowers and flora and the birds and the animals come back into view, you'll be able to find the spells that you will need to help you through your daily practice. A nature walk once a week really is a must. Spring is the time when our thoughts turn to our romantic partners, don't they? If you haven't got that special someone in your life, now is the time that you might do a love spell. And love spells work very well at this time of year. And so recommended. Now, just beware, though, that you do a love spell to call general love in. Because if you're calling for one particular person, that might be changing their viewpoint of you using darker forces of magic. And your love will not be able to grow properly there. It is also also, in my opinion, not very moral. So if you do a love spell, just do a spell to call love to you, if that's what you're looking for. If in doubt, I've made one for you. First, you'll need a shell. Shells bring sexual awakenings and sex magic into your love spells, which is always important. Next, you'll need some candles. I always use birthday cake candles, and you'll have one for yourself and one for a future partner. Simply choose the colours that you like. Next is a key because, of course, this is the key to your heart. And finally, I'm using rosemary flowers and leaves because rosemary is in flower at the moment and it is a spring love spell after all.
The spell is very simple. On a Friday, as Friday is governed by the love planet Venus, light your two candles and place them in the shell. Add to the shell the key and, of course, the rosemary and flowers. And you simply say, let this flame of passion burn for thee. I ask a lover to come to me. Let the candles burn down and your spell is cast. However, you can help yourself by looking at beauty spells. And actually, they're not as difficult as you might think. Beauty spells can be as simple as casting a circle about your makeup so that when you put it on, you put on your makeup to the best of your ability and it makes you look as beautiful as it can. And that's a great spell to do. So look to beauty spells in this spring. And finally, this is the time when traditionally a witch's power or her sprawl is growing at its greatest rate. As we go through the winter season, we tend to slumber down and hibernate somewhat. But in the spring, our energy, our ability, our sprawl, as it's known, really is coming to the fore. And so this is the time to recharge your talismans, amulets and charms. Traditionally, the people of old would take their charms back to the witch who cast them for them and ask them to re-energise them. And this is what you should be looking to do now. Do you have any other spring rituals that you use? I mean, do let me know. I'm really interested to hear your viewpoint on this, only because we learn from each other's ideas. And so I need to learn from you as much as you will be learning from me. Just don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill. There is lots of extra information there. I do post there two or three times a month and it's only a couple of quid. So do go and join me there. And otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe because this really helps my channel and makes me feel happy. I love you all very dearly. So please subscribe to my channel so I can carry on making these videos for you. And I will see you in a week or so.